Hey there everyone! It's been a bit since I last did one of these state of the channel videos and a bunch of new people have subscribed recently so I figured now would be a great time to make one. So first off, if you are new around here, welcome! My name's Erin, aka Erin Cerise. <laughs> I've been on YouTube for about 13 years or so and I've been making dedicated video content for about seven of them. It's been a while! <laughs> To give a quick history lesson, I started out making Pokemon Let's Plays, which are a little rough around the edges to look back on now, but I'm actually still really proud of that stuff. So if you like Pokemon, I, I recommend going back to check out my old series like the Dice Lock or the Idol Lock. They're, they're honestly really great fun if you like that kind of thing. And then I dabbled in a few other things along the way, including a few video essays and some other Let's Plays, including some LPs of We Know the Devil and Syrup and the Ultimate Sweet that I'm very proud of. Uh, but the next big thing came in late 2014 when I started doing videos about Love Live School Idol Festival, and that has been a huge part of the channel ever since. A lot of people know me solely for my Love Live videos, and if that's you, then thank you very much, thank you so much for the support that you've shown me for that over the years. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And in more recent times, my big project has been my Magical Girl History series, Maho Profile, which aims to chronicle the Magical Girl genre from the very beginning, show by show, in chronological order. It takes a lot of work to make those videos. On average, it takes like two to four months of production time for each one of those. That's largely due to the amount of research, writing, audio editing, and video editing that they all take. Oh god, it's a lot. But they are absolutely the thing that I am the most proud of in my history of YouTubing thus far, and I am so glad that people are so patient waiting for them, and also so excited to show their support when they do come out. So again, thank you all for that. And even more recently, I attempted to make some more Magical Girl content to be more in line with Maho Profile, so I made a few videos about Precure, both in the recent fake Precures video and the basic review videos I made under the name Cure Club. And most, most recently, I put out my first video about the game Magia Record, which is the Madoka Magica mobile game, if you haven't heard of that. And I've been playing a ton of that game lately, <laughs> so it's not going to be the last one, spoilers. And uh, yeah, that pretty much brings you up to speed with where we are now, so we can probably start the the update portion of this State of the Channel video. So um, I guess speaking of Precure, that is related to the first update I want to make for this video. And unfortunately it is going to be a disappointing one. If you jumped on board with the fake Cures video, I sadly cannot promise any regular Precure content coming up in the near future. Cure Club took a lot more time and effort to keep up with writing and editing than I anticipated, even with three to four weeks between videos, so I don't think I can continue with that unless my work schedule changes pretty drastically in the future. I would still like to make more Precure videos eventually, but it would have to be in a different format, I think. Probably more of the one-offs in the style of that fake Cures video. But there are a few too many other things on my plate at the moment that take priority, so it's probably going to be a while before one of those materializes. So if you subscribe to this channel for Precure content, then I understand if that is disappointing to hear, and I'm sorry that you won't be getting that from me for a while. Thanks so much for coming to check out the channel. Regardless, I do hope to have something for you later on down the line, and I do hope that you enjoy my other Magical Girl videos, at least if you do stick around, so thank you if you do. On a related note, I also stopped making Diary of an Oshiman challenge for a lot of the same reasons I stopped making Cure Club. Those videos actually did take a lot more time and effort to make than it might seem, mainly because I had much bigger plans for that series than I let on at the beginning. Long story short, the Oshiman Diary would have eventually morphed into like a kind of borderline experimental horror series, as you may have guessed if you saw some of the weirder bits in the more recent episode. But again, I think my reach exceeded my grasp on that one in terms of production time. It also did not help that the response to that one was a little bit tepid, which is fair. I think I could have gone a bit faster paced in those early episodes of that one, so that's fair. 
Um, but I was also starting to feel a bit burnt out on School Idol Festival, so that contributed to it being harder to make those videos as well. And burnout in general is also something I'd like to talk about. And this is going to start getting a bit personal for me, so fair warning, if you don't care about personal stuff, then just want to hear the updates on what's coming out in the near future, you can skip to the time code shown on screen here. Okay, so did everyone who wanted to skip do so? Cool, then let's continue. So I talk a lot in my update videos, this one included, about how much time and energy things take to make, and that's always been true. Making YouTube videos isn't exactly like back-breaking labor, I wouldn't ever claim that, but it's not a walk in the park either. Even simple videos still take creative effort and attention to produce, and when you try to make multiple kinds of videos like I do, all that effort adds up over time. Even just like playing the games or watching the anime for this stuff can be its own kind of work, because that still involves a lot of planning, a lot of note-taking, blocking out time where it can happen, gathering and organizing the footage and uploading it to my computer, that kind of thing. Blah. It's still a lot. But that's, that's true for all YouTube creators of my type. Plenty of them still manage to put out content more regularly than I do, even if they have a full-time job to work around. Like, I know Rin Senpai is kind of amazing because I know he works full-time and he still manages to make a ton of stuff, so kudos to him, especially. So why is it harder for me to be consistent with what I put out? Either this is both in terms of upload frequency and also the type of content itself. Why is it hard for me to be consistent about both of those things? Well, there's another factor at play that I haven't brought up on the channel before and very rarely bring up online at all, really. And that's my mental health. To be clear, it's not that I'm ashamed of anything on that front. I feel pretty strongly that people shouldn't be stigmatized or feel like they should hide who they are over their mental health. That's wrong if they do, if they feel like they should have to do that. I it's just mainly been a personal thing for me. I've mainly always felt like my diagnosis is a personal thing, so I didn't really feel the need to publicize it. However, the more I the more I see people sharing stories about their mental health online, spreading empathy and understanding for people with different conditions and ways of living, and showing what wonderful people they are while being loudly and proudly neurodivergent has been really inspiring for me, so it, it makes me want to share that kind of feeling with you all as well. That and, well, <laughs> the state of my mental health really does strongly affect what gets made on this channel, so after a certain point, it does feel like I should share what's going on so that you don't think I'm just holding out on you all for no reason. Sorry, I had to stop for a second. Apparently someone is putting out like metal sheeting or something outside, so excuse me if there's going to be a little bit of ambient noise in the background of this video. Anyway, so with that all said, here is the super personal, totally world-shaking thing I have to say about my mental health. I have Asperger's Syndrome. Oh wow, who saw that coming, right? The girl who wants to obsessively detail everything about the magical girl genre has a condition that leads one to obsess over things. It's a big shocker, I know. I'll, I'll give you a moment to take that in. So, I was diagnosed by a psychologist a little under a decade ago, so I've been aware that I've been on the spectrum for a long time now. But I don't think I fully understood just how much it affected me until like the last year or so. I joke, but I've always known that my condition makes me fixate on certain things for extended periods of time, and in turn that makes it difficult for me to focus on anything that doesn't interest me. I think lately though, I've realized things I always used to brush off as just aspects of my personality are probably more tied in with my condition than I thought. Like. I'm much better at socializing now than I used to be, but social situations, for example, have always been something that I've struggled with. And the more aware of my mind and body I get as I get older, the more aware I am of exactly how physically and mentally draining those situations are for me. It's not just that I feel socially awkward and that makes me not want to be in social situations, it's I get physically tired during social interactions, and that makes me want to retreat and recharge if I do it for too long. 
And that's not just in the usual introversion way either. It, it also has to do with getting tired from having to hold up, I guess, a, a facade of neurotypicality, I guess you could call it. Like holding back in a conversation when all I want to do is talk about my current obsession, or putting in a lot of mental effort to follow social cues that a lot of people find effortless, trying to adapt my speech and behavior to whoever's speaking so that I can keep the conversation at their comfort level, ignoring that bell voice in my head that always says, hey, 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 when do we get to stop talking and go back to enjoying my hyperfixation in peace by myself? Can we go, please, now? Yeah, that kind of thing. Even a lot of, like, online or text-only interactions can feel that way, since that's often still mental effort spent not being in the groove that my brain wants to be in at that moment, whatever it is. Hence why I'm not often active on live chat platforms, say, like Discord, or why I don't live stream a lot. Like, I, I do like to do it sometimes, like when we do, like, a, a premiere for a new video, but that's like a short burst, I can do that. There's a, there's a really great article, actually, over on Autism and Expectations about autistic exhaustion, if you want to read more about how that kind of thing feels. They worded it way, way, way more eloquently than I think I could, especially not in this format. <laughs> anyway, this all relates to the channel, because I think as you can tell from the history lesson I just gave, my channel has gone through a few phases in its lifetime. And those phases are a direct result of the shifts in my special interests slash hyperfixations over time. For a while, my main special interest was Pokemon, and more specifically, Pokemon Nuzlocks. I had other interests, of course, I always have a lot of interests, but... Uh, I don't think you all understand exactly how much time I spent watching and reading Nuzlocks. And this was over a period of a few years, from like the moment I learned what a Nuzlocke was, I was into it. <laughs> I would think about them all the time, obsess over the dynamics of how they played out in different runs, and different approaches, serious and silly and straightforward and whatnot. I would seek out new and exciting variations of them, and always be looking for, for more Nuzlocke runs that fit my preferred formats for them. And one of those formats was video runs. And that made me want to create my own video Nuzlocke run. So I did. <laughs> Simple as that. And then I suddenly got very into a certain silly cell phone game. And that interrupted my normal flow of Pokemon content. <laughs> Both in terms of like making the videos, but also in terms of like being into Pokemon, just generally. <laughs> And I got even more into this silly cell phone game when I realized how fun it was to make videos about it. So that obsession ended up lasting for several years as well. Sometimes it waxed and waned along the way, but it always stayed at at least a level where the game had like a dedicated spot in my brain space. And it's been hard to admit until recently, but I just don't think I'm as hyper fixated on that silly cell phone game as I used to be. To be clear, that does not mean that I don't like it anymore, or that I'll never obsess over it again, honestly. Like, heck, I kind of expect I might bounce back to it soon enough, considering that certain silly cell phone game is set to get a long-awaited revitalization pretty soon here. But right now, at this moment in late 2019, before that revitalization has come out, I would say my current fixations are my work on Maho Profile and on the game Magia Record, not Love Live. I have made one Magia Record video so far as a way to vent some of my excitement about that game. I haven't made more, partly just due to a lack of time. I actually have been very busy at work recently and it's just taken a lot out of me. But also because, honestly, I've been afraid of what my audience would think if I suddenly started spewing out a bunch of Magi Reco content out of nowhere. I think it would be very much like the way I suddenly started spewing out Love Live content in the middle of my previous stream of Pokemon. I know a lot of people who used to follow my Pokemon videos and they were very disappointed when Love Live slowly started taking over the channel and then when I stopped making Pokemon videos altogether. And I still feel guilty about that to this day. I kind of wish I still had 
I wish I still had it in me to make another Nuzlocke series, because those were always so fun to do. But I just, I really can't guarantee that with my life schedule being how it is, and the way that my hyperfixations are leaning, that I would be able to keep up with one, so I haven't attempted it. And as guilty as I feel about having left my Pokémon fans in the dust, I would probably feel 10,000 times worse about doing the same to my Love Live fans. Of the 35,000 plus people subscribed to this channel, I would wager the vast majority of them originally subscribed for Love Live content. And to be clear, I am not afraid of losing subscribers or clout or whatever the f god no. That would actually be kind of comforting in a way, because that means less pressure to perform, honestly. Again, it's that feeling of not wanting to disappoint people that keeps me up at night. I've received so many messages of appreciation over the years from people who have said that my Love Live videos make them smile, or help them get better at the game, or have helped them through tough times. Even just tough times like saving love gems. <laughs> That's its own kind of tough time. Whenever I do put out a new Love Live video these days, like the, the blue coupon special that came out recently, the comments I saw saying how much people missed hearing my voice and my enthusiasm for Scouts is really heartening. It's, it made me want to make more Love Live videos. I like knowing that I've made those people's days better and maybe helped satisfy a hyperfixation for someone else out there on the spectrum. It certainly would help me if I were in that position. It, I mean, it helped me so, like, it very specifically helped me watching other people's Love Live videos. That's why I reached out to so many other Love Live people, because they helped me to satisfy my Love Live fixation. <laughs> and it's been really good to, to be in that community of people. It's, it's the idea of letting down all of you who feel like that about my Love Live videos that makes me feel so torn about maybe shifting focus. However, at the end of the day, I know I have to accept that this is my channel, and it wouldn't be what it is if I didn't make the kinds of videos I want to make. I may not be the most algorithm friendly, I may let people down and lose subscribers whenever I shift focus to some new topic of interest. I'm probably never gonna actually make a living at the rate that I'm going, but whatever, that was kind of unlikely even with dedicated effort to be algorithm friendly. But still, this channel is mine. It's mine, damn it. As much as I wish I could satisfy all my viewers for all time, I know that if I force myself to make videos about things I'm not that into, not only will that be physically and mentally harder due to my Asperger's, but on principle, I just know that I wouldn't be being true to myself. And I know that a lot of my subscribers have told me as much over the years, so I know a lot of y'all understand this too. So I guess what I'm saying with this long and rambling fucking update video- Wow, Aaron did a swear. <laughs> what I'm saying with this long and fucking rambling update video is I hope you all accept my channel for being the way it is, inconsistencies and all. I know a lot of you are here for me as a creator and watch all of my stuff or most of it regardless of what it's about and to you all I'm extremely grateful. Some of you have followed me through Pokemon, through Let's Plays, Love Live, and Magical Girls, and whatever is to come, and the fact that the common thing you like is just that it's my work and it's my unique take on things that, that makes my heart feel very, very warm. And thank you. Thank you all for that so much. But if you just came to see a certain kind of content and you aren't interested in what I make outside of that, I think that's fine as well. I'm still really, really glad you enjoyed those videos. After all, I just spent so much time saying that I know very well how it feels to be into a very specific thing and to not be interested in stuff that is not the thing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all as well so much for watching, regardless of how much or how little you watched. And I will tell you the thing that YouTubers never do, it's okay to not like, comment, and subscribe if you don't want to. Just you having enjoyed some small part of my work is enough, and I'm really grateful for that. Thank you. I do at least hope that the consistent thing I can offer on my channel is a certain vibe stemming just from my personality and from the kinds of things that I'm drawn to. Through all of my content, I kind of like to think that the commonalities are 
positivity, geekery with a feminine focus, and just a desire to share information in an entertaining and open-hearted way. If those are things that you like, I think you'll find yourself at home here, especially with Maho Profile, which I, I definitely consider to be the most widely accessible thing that I create. I just want to be clear that the exact topics I make videos about will always shift over time as a result of my changing special interests, life circumstances, periods of burnout, and whatnot. Ugh. I am not a Pokemon channel. I am not a Love Live channel. I'm not even a Magical Girl channel. I'm the Erin Cerise channel. You can find videos about a bunch of those things on it, but at the end of the day, this channel is about the things I like, and I need to stay true to whatever that is at any given time. That's just who I am, and it's who I want to be. All of that said, I think I can still give a pretty good projection of what's coming up in the near future. The next Maho profile is, of course, still on its way. It's been taking a bit longer than I'd like due to, again, variances in how much time and energy I can put towards it, but it is coming. The script is done, the voiceover is all recorded, and the audio editing is currently underway. There will also be another Maho Mini coming out at some point, uh, because I got another Patreon commission. I know at least a few of you have said that you would be excited to see me talk about Ojemajo Doremi sometime, and if that's you, then you are in luck! You can expect a first impressions look at the first seven episodes of the first season of Doremi, probably sometime in the next month or two. It's a very rough time estimate, don't hold me to that, but that's what I'm currently expecting. In the more immediate future, uh, Love Live isn't going away quite, quite yet. I, I want to be clear about that, Love Live's not going away. Uh, so you can expect to see both Love Live and Magia Record videos coming out, with uh, hopefully a little bit more frequency, fingers crossed. I am indeed excited about the advent of Love Live All-Stars, and I do plan to do some stuff related to that, including, here's an announcement, including a return to the Sunshine Sunday podcast with Umida! Yay! <laughs> I may or may not also do a video introducing people to the girls of Nijigasaki, depending on how my schedule shakes out. So definitely look forward to that stuff. Not sure about the Nijigasaki video yet, but I, I hope I get time for that too. And Magia Record-wise, I have plans for a simple Let's Play style series that I would like to start up with that, which is probably what I'm going to start working on as soon as this update video is done, because that's honestly what I'm most excited for at the moment. That's what my brain has decided to hyperfixate on currently. I did also record my gotcha pulls for Tart slash Dark. I'm not sure if I'll put those up as a video yet or not, since as I've said in the the mirrors video that I put up. I think fate weave videos are a little boring, just the way that they're set up in that game. But if I get the time and inspiration to put those together in an interesting way, I would like to do that. Because the polls definitely were interesting, let's say. Outside of that, I am still making appearances on the Magia Record episodes of Madoka Magicast. Our next episode covering chapter one of the main story and the Maiden of Hope event should hopefully be out within the next couple of weeks here. You can check out the Madoka Magicast channel for that, and you should also just check out Majo Madoka Magicast, especially, well, one if you like Madoka, but also if you like shows like, say, Utena or like deeper magical girl analysis in general, it's a very good podcast and you should listen to it. Um, and speaking of podcasts, by the way, <laughs> I have appeared a few times in the past on the podcast Zanen Canada, which is a show about the anime fan experience in Canada, and I have another appearance on that show coming up in the near future where we're going to talk about our experiences with Animathon in Edmonton, Alberta. I'm not sure when that episode will release, but I will be sure to announce it on my community feed when it drops, so keep an eye on that coming up. And lastly, I want to mention a few pie-in-the-sky hopes that I have that, again, may or may not ever materialize, so don't hold me to these if they don't. But one of my lesser-known obsessions actually is podcasts. I used to make a couple of podcasts back in the day before I started doing YouTube. I've guested on a lot of people's podcasts, including shows like ANNcast and Loading Ready Runs Anoani podcast. 
And I, I just always have a steady diet of shows feeding into my ear holes at work and on my commutes. And in the past year or so, year and a half really, I guess at this point, thanks in big part to my experience listening to The Adventure Zone, I've gotten into actual play tabletop RPG podcasts in a big way. Now that's a, that's a niche right there, for sure. <laughs> Some of my current favorite shows apart from Taz include Critical Bits, Bombarded, The Roaring Trainers, and Brits on Bikes, all of which are fantastic and I recommend you go check out ASAP. These shows have helped to rekindle my interest in tabletop RPGs as a whole and earlier this year I actually GM'd a game for the first time since like 2008. <laughs> the 2008 time was really disastrous so this is an accomplishment for me. <laughs> And I had a lot of fun with that, and it made me think that I might like to run a campaign on this channel at some point, either in podcast or live stream format, I'm not sure. To be on brand with the channel, I think it, it might be fun to do like a magical girl campaign, or an idol campaign, or a magical girl idol campaign, that kind of thing. I'm not sure what system I would use, probably something in the Powered by the Apocalypse family, like masks, or a dedicated magical girl game like Magical Fury or Sparks. But that's a thing that I would like to do if I ever manage to find the right combination of time, energy, people, and drive. <laughs> so that's, yes, I would love to do that someday if I can. On a similar front, I do also have a couple video ideas in mind covering some of the specific podcasts I like, including a video introducing viewers to the content of the McElroy Brothers, and a video gushing about Critical Bits and why it's the best teen superhero body horror anti-fascist corndog propaganda piece ever conceived in human history. Again, these might not ever materialize since they're fairly low priority compared to the other stuff I want to make, but if there's ever a good opportunity, don't be surprised if one of those pops up in your feed one day. Okay, <laughs> I think that is enough of me talking for now. Thank you so much for listening to this, even if you just listen to the update portions. You are all so awesome. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you around for future videos. Have yourself a good day. Goodbye!